Hi friends, my name is Jess. Welcome or welcome back to Books Past Bedtime. Today I have on my Cowboy Like Me sweater because I am doing book recommendations based on Evermore songs. Now I know this is a little late. I really wanted to do this when the album first came out but I just wasn't feeling inspired and now I am. Honestly, I still love Evermore as much as I did when it first came out so better late than never with this video honestly. I would like to do all of her albums so this is the first step. We're gonna go backwards. And so here are the books that I recommend for every song on Evermore. So the first track on Evermore is of course Willow and for this song I'm going to recommend The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. Now The Raven Boys is about this group of friends who all revolve around their leader Gansey. Gansey's mission in life is to find where this dead Welsh king is buried and find these ley lines because he believes that that's where like magic converges in real life. This book is very like whimsical and magical but it's got elements of found family and romance and friendship and it's just one of my favorite books of all time. Maggie Stiefvater is such a beautiful writer. I love this so much. And Willow really makes me think of this particularly because of the almost like hero worship aspects that are in Willow, like lines like that's my man and wreck my plans, those kinds of things. I feel like that's how Gansey's friends all feel about him. They all kind of gravitate towards him and around him, really just like put all of their trust in him. I also feel like the lyric wait for my signal and I'll meet you after dark embodies this book because there's a lot of stuff they're doing in secret and in the dark and I just feel like that line is very fitting to the plot of the book and just the overall vibe of the the song I feel like really vibes with Raven Boys. It's very like earthy and <laughs> lyrical and beautiful just like Willow is. I also feel like the lyrics of Willow pretty perfectly fit one of the romances in this book, particularly between Adam and Ronan, especially the lines like bent right to your wind and wherever you lead I'll follow. I feel like that's very like Adam's response to Ronan because Ronan is such like a headstrong character and Adam is just like there to support him and love him. Oh, I love this book so much and I feel like it really fits the vibes of Willow. Next is Champagne Problems and for this song I'm going to recommend The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and the reason I'm recommending this book for this song it's just the vibes man like the vibes of these songs fit these books perfectly in my opinion. Champagne Problems feels very much like I don't know like rich elegant people <laughs> and I feel like that is the kind of characters that are in The Cruel Prince. There's like the high class society drama element to The Cruel Prince which I I feel um, parallels Champagne Problems really well. The Cruel Prince is basically a YA fantasy and it takes place in this fey world. Our main character Jude is a human living in this fey world. She doesn't feel like she fits in. Cardin the Prince is like one of her biggest bullies but for the plan that Jude has she really needs to trick him and get him on her side. So there's a lot of like dramatic things happening to people that were like not meant to be together who are very much just don't fit and don't understand each other who are destined to fall apart. I feel like I don't know why but this book just speaks to me in the way that this song does and I think that they are a perfect match. The next song on the album is Gold Rush and for Gold Rush I want to recommend Her Royal Highness by Rachel Hawkins. This is a YA romance story. It's enemies to lovers. It is about our main character who moves to this boarding school in Scotland and there she meets Princess Flora and they hate each other at first but eventually they fall in love <laughs> and it's really cute and Gold Rush I'm sorry but it's a gay song. It is about women. <laughs> So I feel like for that reason also this book fits that song and also like it's basically about Flora like Flora is so beautiful Everybody loves her. She's the princess and our main character does not want to fall for her But she can't really help it and I just it's perfect like read the book and listen to the song and you will understand <laughs> Next is Tis the Damn Season and for this song I want to recommend Rock by Nyata Sunday. Rock is a bit of a taboo romance between two boys who are stepbrothers and it's a very like long tumultuous relationship and I feel like it really reminds me of like the bittersweet painful nature of Tis the Damn Season. Both the book and the song are about two people who have already realized that they shouldn't be together, that they're not right for one another but they can't help coming back together. I feel like it also speaks to the In My Hometown lyric because they're literally stepbrothers, they share the same home. <laughs> and like the whole like private secretive nature of the song um, I feel like really fits the vibe of the book as well. I feel like it basically just describes the relationship in this book and it hurts to think about <laughs> but you should read it because it's so good. Next song is Tolerate It. I know there's a couple different ways to interpret Tolerate It but I very much fall in the camp that it is about a coming out and it's about your parents not really understanding or accepting you but just tolerating you. That's really what the song feels like to me. Um, I think it could also apply 
tie to a relationship and like giving all your love to somebody and they not reciprocating in the same way. I definitely think it can be interpreted either way, but I prefer the first interpretation, if you may. So the book that I'm going to recommend is Stay Gold by Toby McSmith. This is a YA contemporary about a trans teen who kind of tries to pass his senior year of high school when he moves to a new school. He doesn't want people to know that he's trans and he eventually falls for one of the cheerleaders and she's falling for him too but doesn't know that he's trans. There's a lot of different issues going on in this book but I feel like Tolerate It really embodies particularly the relationship between our main character and his father um, and it also kind of mirrors the relationship between him and his cheerleader girlfriend love interest because there's definitely some drama that happens there. More so the parent-child dynamics I feel like really mirrors this song perfectly. It's very heartbreaking. This book is really hard to read. I definitely would look up trigger warnings but I feel like it really embodies my personal interpretation of Tolerate It. Next song is Nobody No Crime. At first this was kind of the one that I was having a lot of trouble matching a book to but once I really started brainstorming this was one of the ones I had the most options for but I couldn't not ultimately go with Where the Crawl Dad Sing by Delia Owens. This is like the ultimate whodunit feminist book. Like I just it's so freaking good. Um, it takes place in two different timelines, um, one in the present and one in the past. In the past, we are watching our main character grow up. She has a very rough childhood. Her family kind of abandons her and she has to raise herself. She lives in the marshes. It's called the Marsh Girl around town, doesn't really have a formal education, and is taken advantage of quite a bit when she is young. And then in the present timeline, we're following this court case that she is involved in. She's been accused of the murder of this local man in town, and she really has very few advocates in the town. Everybody just kind of blames her because she's the easiest one to blame and we see how that case unfolds juxtaposed against her growing up. This was the best book that I read in 2020. I loved it so so much and it just <laughs> it fits the song so well. Like if you've read this book you know that ending though. Oh my god. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Oh my gosh. Next song is Happiness and I didn't really vibe with this song at first when Evermore first came out but now I definitely like it a little bit more and the book I want to recommend for this song is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now I know this song at its core is about a relationship but what I really see in this book that's similar is the girl's relationship with their father. This book is about two half sisters whose father dies in a tragic plane crash and they only find out about one another once their father dies he was kind of living two separate lives, had two separate families, and so they really have to come to terms with how much they loved this man, how many happy memories they had with their father, um, but also how badly he hurt them by keeping the secret from them and living these two different lives, cheating on their moms, etc. And I feel like that really embodies the conflicted nature of this song and like a good person hurt you, um, how do you forgive them and move on from that and still be like, well, there were happy times, but that doesn't mean um, there weren't also bad times times and I just feel like this song and this book go super well together and have so many similar themes. This book is also really beautiful. I would recommend you read it regardless. It's such a good book and it explores grief and trauma and what it means to be family so well. I love it so much and would very much recommend. Next song is Dorothea and for this I'm going to recommend Late to the Party by Kelly Quindlin. I had a little bit of trouble picking a book for the song but I feel like this book goes really well. This is basically a female female romance. YA. It follows our main character Cody. Cody is very much like straight laced, straight A's, doesn't go out a lot doesn't drink any of that stuff. But then one summer, the summer before her senior year, she decides she wants to live a little bit more. She goes to this party um, and befriends some new people, meets a new girl, starts living a little bit more of her life and having a really cute romance with this girl, Lydia. And I feel like the ending of this was very bittersweet in that, yeah, it was a happy ending, but it also acknowledges that this is high school. It might not be forever, but in the moment, it's really happy. And I feel like that's kind of down the road. These characters could be singing this song, Dorothea, and be like, are you still the same person? And I met under the bleachers like I still think about you sometimes we have this great romance moved on a little bit but I still think about you and I still would love to be with you and like the vibes of Dorothea it's, not, it's like a high school kind of setting meeting under the bleachers that kind of thing so I feel like it really vibes with late to the party because it's very much quintessential how everybody felt as a teenager in high school and I really feel like the song does as well and they go really cute together it's a cute song it's a cute book would really recommend on a bit more somber note the next song on the album is Coney Island to be honest with you, Coney Island is probably one of my least favorite songs on Evermore. I just don't like it very much. I don't really like the national on it. <laughs> I like some of the lyrics, but it just is a bit too 
too slow of a song for me, but I actually absolutely love the book I'm going to recommend for this song, and that is The Death of Vivek Oji by Kwaki Mezi. This book follows Vivek, and in the opening chapter, Vivek is found dead on his mother's doorstep, and there's kind of a backwards chronological storytelling going on here where we follow Vivek's life and the events that led up to their eventual death. This book explores gender identity and sexuality, as well as family dynamics, friendship dynamics, romance. There's a lot of stuff going on in this. It's a very, very hard-hitting book, very emotional. I feel like like the main line of the song, I'm sitting on a bench in Coney Island wondering where did my baby go, very much seems like it describes how Vivek's best friend and cousin felt about Vivek, and I could picture him really relating to that song. And just the overall like sad and bittersweet nature of Coney Island, I feel really it fits the vibes of Vivek Oji as well, and how like life just feels like it's come to a standstill around you, even though it's moving like you feel frozen in time. I feel like that really fits the vibes of this book. This was also one of my favorite books I read in 2020, so if you haven't read it already, I would really recommend that you do. Next song is Ivy, which is definitely in my top three of Evermore. And for this song, I'm going to recommend Cemetery Boys by Aiden Thomas. Now, hear me out for a second. <laughs> I would really love to recommend a sapphic book for this song because in my head this song is sapphic, but I couldn't think of a good one. But I feel like Cemetery Boys also really fits the vibe and it's gay too, so we're gonna let it slide. Cemetery Boys is basically about our main character Yadriel. Yadriel is trans. In his family that's not really accepted. He has a very strained relationship with his dad, but what's special about Yadriel's family is that they are magical in his family. Women are witches and the men can raise the dead, and so he really wants to go through with the ceremony to become a, a death phrase what <laughs> words so he really wants to go through the ceremony to become a ghost summoner like the rest of the men in his family. His father and other men in the family are very resistant to that. Um, so he kind of goes off on his own trying to prove himself and he incidentally raises somebody from the dead that he didn't mean to and it's this boy that he went to school with. Um, so they're trying to figure out what happened to him and why he is dead because he doesn't remember while also trying to figure out what happened to Yadriel's cousin who is also missing. There's something weird going on. There's like a mystery to be solved. But the reason that I picked this for Ivy, I feel like Ivy is a pretty like witchy song and I feel like there's definitely a witchy vibes in this book. Ivy is also like a very rich song and this book one of the best words I could use to describe it is rich. There are so many complex and well fleshed out characters. The plot is really awesome. There's some cool magical elements. There's a lot of culture because Yadriel's family is Latinx and there are some really cool cultural elements and events woven into the story so I feel like that aspect is very similar as well. Also the fact that there is a like secret forbidden romance in this book between Yadriel and Julian, the ghost that he summons. <laughs> One that he's a ghost, like <laughs> they can't really be together. Um, and also because it's like a gay relationship, that aspect of somebody being disapproving, not liking the relationship is definitely there. Also like the bridge in Ivy is one of my favorites where it's talking about it's a fire, it's a war. Uh, there's some good fight scenes in this book that I feel like are reminiscent to that bridge, especially towards the end. I feel like the end perfectly parallels the bridge of this song and would be like great to listen to while you're reading that. And just the overall like magical school quality of this book I feel like is very similar to Ivy and that is why I picked this book for Ivy and I feel like they actually work really well. The next song on the album is Cowboy Like Me. When I first saw the track list I was really expecting something different for this song like I thought it was gonna be more of a bop. <laughs> I don't know why. And this song like is a bop but in like a low-key way that took me a little while to appreciate. Now I really love it and I feel like I wanted to recommend something different for this song. I feel like I have a couple good westerns sitting on my TBR that I like wish I had read before I made this video but oh well. The book that I am going to recommend though is Walk on Earth a Stranger by Ray Carson. This is a YA fantasy which I don't hear talked about a lot but it's one of my favorites. It is basically about our main character who has the power to sense gold under the earth. You can see how that would be valuable and it's definitely a western. It takes place in the 1800s during the gold rush era and so um, when her father is killed and she kind of has nothing left going for her, she heads out west. She disguises herself as a boy, hops on a wagon train to head out west and she meets somebody along the way and they have a romance. I'm a sucker for like the like, girl disguises herself as a boy trope. I don't know why. It doesn't last very long in this book but I just think it's a fun time especially because like the bi panic vibes where it's like <laughs> the love interest doesn't know if they're a boy or a girl but they are still in love with them you know mm, I like it 
it's like queer without being queer, you know? And I'm enjoying that kind of stuff. So I really like this one. I like the vibes of it. It's got Western like Oregon Trail Gold Rush vibes. And I feel like cowboy like me, like it makes sense, okay? Next is a long story short. This is a very fun song, even though it's not one of my favorites. But I feel like the books that perfectly match this song are Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. This is a really cute graphic novel series about our main characters, Nick and Charlie, who have this really cute high school romance. And I feel like the long story short, I survived lyric really fits these because these two characters go through a lot but their like one salvation is each other. Charlie in particular experiences an eating disorder and Nick is very supportive of his recovery. Nick also had quite a few difficulties that Charlie helped him through. I feel like this relationship just very much embodies this song because it's like they have found their person and all the stuff in the past like yeah it sucks it but it doesn't matter that much because they have each other it's so cute. I love this graphic novel series and I feel like this song fits it perfectly. Next song is Marjorie. Oh my god, this song makes me cry. If I'm like alone and listening to it in the car, I'm like really listening to and taking in the lyrics while simultaneously thinking on my grandmother. I just, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know how anybody in Taylor's family or Taylor herself listens to this song after she recorded it because, oh my god, I... It makes me a mess. But I feel like the perfect book to go with this song is The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This wasn't my favorite book of all time. I think I gave it like three and a half stars, but the plot and the themes of this book perfectly match with the song Marjorie. So in this book, our main character Lee loses her mother, but she really believes that her mother is still around in the form of this red bird that keeps flying around. And so she doesn't really feel like she's actually lost her mother. And then she goes to China to meet her uh, maternal grandparents for the first time and learns more about her mother. This book definitely deals a lot with themes of grief and how to move on, keep living your life while still remembering and honoring those that you've lost. And I feel like that is just so perfect for Marjorie and especially the lyrics like, you were still around, you're still walking to me, really mirrors how our main character Lee feels with believing her mom is still around in the form of a bird. And I really just couldn't think of a more perfect song to embody the themes of this book. Next song is Closure, which is probably actually, it's down there at the bottom. I don't <laughs> This one and Coney Island are Millie's favorites. I like the message of the song, but it's like, Taylor, why are you making pots and pants around in the background? Like, <laughs> cut it out. But anyway, I do like the message of the song and the lyrics and I feel like they're very similar to something I could imagine Cameron Post from The Miseducation of Cameron Post saying. Um, this book is basically a character study of Cameron Post. She is a young gay girl. Um, she loses her parents really early on in life and kind of has to come to terms with herself and her sexuality without them. She grows up with her grandmother and her aunt and they are very much not accepting of her. They actually, once they find out that she is gay, send her away to a conversion therapy camp, which is so, so traumatic. But this book really has a bittersweet ending where Cameron really takes agency over her life. And although closure, I feel like doesn't fit the events of this book, it is something that I can imagine Cameron Post saying after the events of this book, particularly like to her aunt or grandmother, um, if they for some reason like reached out and apologized to her or like were trying to get closure about the situation. Um, I feel like she could be like, I don't need your closure. Like, goodbye. <laughs> I'm done with you guys. So that is why I matched that book to the song. And the last song on the standard album is obviously Evermore. Evermore is also probably in my top three of songs from this album. I think it is the most beautiful song ever. It is so pretty. I love the lyrics. And the book that I chose to match with this song is Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. If you didn't know, Bear Town is about a girl who is sexually assaulted by the star hockey player in this hockey town in Sweden. And it divides the entire town. Some are supporting the hockey player saying like boys will be boys it was a mistake it probably didn't even happen she's lying while the girl and her family are on the other side trying to get him arrested for this crime that he committed and it's just a very traumatic emotional read and I feel like the lyrics of this song are also very very sad but ultimately hopeful at the end and I feel like this book is the same I also feel like the winter setting is very similar to how evermore feels it very much feels like a winter 
summer song, a place that is set in winter time. I feel like Evermore really embodies the vibes of Bear Town as well and that they go together perfectly. And then wouldn't be a Books Past Bedtime video if it wasn't over ambitious. So of course we are doing the bonus tracks. <laughs> the first bonus track, Right Where You Left Me, is a freaking bop. I love this song, but it's also kind of sad. <laughs> and the book that I think best matches this song is Loveless by Alice Oseman. So this book is about our main character, Georgia, and Georgia feels very different from her peers because they are all like having relationships, falling in love. She's never really felt that with anybody. And so throughout this book, she's kind of coming to terms with identifying as asexual and maybe just not being interested in having sex or a relationship with somebody else. This book also has great like found family friendship aspects and it takes place in college which is something we don't see a lot so I really loved the story it is very good um it's very emotional and hard-hitting and I feel like it goes with right where you left me because I feel like in right where you left me she's talking about like being frozen in time her life's not really moving on she feels kind of stuck and I feel like that's probably similar to how Georgia felt she felt like everybody around her was moving on with their life having all of these experiences and she was just kind of stuck in place stagnant not really doing those things and also not really wanting to just being like trapped and frozen I feel like those similar themes are very prevalent in both this song and this book and so I feel like they go together perfectly and then finally time to go is the last bonus track and time to go is obviously about a couple people in Taylor Swift's life that hurt her but I think the song is mostly about her relationship with Scooter Braun and how he just absolutely screwed her over <laughs> And I think the best book to recommend for this song is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a book I read very recently and is about our main character, Enchanted, who gets in this abusive, manipulative relationship with a man who is about 10 years her senior. He is in the music industry and promises to make her famous, but mostly just ends up abusing her, manipulating her. Terrible, terrible situation um, and to the point where he convinces Enchanted along with everyone around her that she is crazy and making things up, gaslighting to the extreme. There's a lot of trigger warnings about this book so definitely be careful going into it but I think it really exposes what happens to a lot of people in the music industry and I'm not saying that Taylor Swift experienced these same things and that's what this song is about but I feel like this song is definitely about somebody who manipulated you so badly and took a lot from you um, but also like knowing when to walk away that it's strong to walk away from situations like that. It's better to just get out than to persevere through that and I feel like Enchanted learns that same lesson in this story that she was very strong for getting out of that situation and getting away. I just feel like there are quite a lot of parallels and I also like the music industry parallel because that's also what Taylor is talking about in this song. Um, I think Taylor would be a big advocate of this book if she were to read it and so that is why I wanted to recommend it in this video. So those are all my book recommendations for Evermore songs. I really hope you enjoyed this this video. It was a lot of fun to make and I always love talking about Taylor Swift so if you want to chat um, definitely DM me. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a like if you liked it. Check out the description for any relevant links and I will see you in the next one. Bye!